Debate to reprise the debate. The Honourable Member for Cowichan, Malahat, Langford. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And before I begin, I'd like to uh, notify you that I'll be splitting my time with the member for the great riding of Port Moody, Coquitlam. <laughs> uh, it's a great honour to be rising to uh, speak on this motion that was brought in from my friend from Victoria because I, I think it's a motion this House really needs to debate. And furthermore, it shines some much needed sunlight on the absolute confusion and contradictions of this Liberal government when it comes to marijuana policy. Here, it's a here. discussion this House needs to have, and more importantly, it's a discussion that Canadians need to hear. This House is debating a motion that is going to recognize the contradiction of continuing to give Canadians criminal records for simple possession of marijuana after the government has clearly and explicitly stated that it should not be a crime. That is a glaring con uh, contradiction and is completely unfair. Now, you know, we've heard it in this House before, and, and I'm sure many Canadians have heard that the definition of insanity is to do things over and over again, um, expecting, uh, even when they don't, don't bring about the same result, we sometimes expect it'll bring a different result. But that's simply what we're doing in this case with our marijuana laws, and it's time that we take uh, a closer look at it. You know, cannabis uh, prohibition in Canada has a history that goes back to the 1920s when it was first added to the Narcotics uh, Drug Act as an amendment after a very light, late night session in April of 1923. And its prohibition uh, going to the United States as well has also been linked with some of the racial policies. It was seen as an effective tool of controlling uh, Mexican immigrant labor. So there's a very clouded history with uh, marijuana uh, prohibition and, and not all of it was based on uh, completely clear science. Legalizing marijuana was the big campaign item of the Liberal plan, uh, but since they have taken office, not very much has been done. And it's also been a big change from the Liberal position. In 2009, they, uh, they voted with the Conservatives to introduce mandatory minimums for cannabis-related offences, uh, not, a, not a sign of a very progressive uh, party back then. And we even have uh, former Liberal Prime Minister Jean Chrétien who has been calling for the decriminalization of marijuana. So we see even within the Liberal Party itself, there are a few different splits here. And I think the government itself, its official policy, is off base with a lot of those members. I think, Madam Speaker, it is the height of hypocrisy that we have a Liberal government which openly and loudly campaigned on the promise to legalize and regulate marijuana is now refusing to do anything for Canadians who are found guilty of that possession. The Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice continues to repeat that the law is the law is the law, and he hopes that all Canadians will respect the law. Now, he's made mention of the fact that he is of the opinion that decriminalization will not do anything to protect our children or remove the profits from criminal activity. Now, Madam Speaker, while I respect the Parliamentary Secretary's many years as a police officer, I think his statements are somewhat misleading to this House and to the Canadian public. Let me make this perfectly clear for everyone listening right now. Under our current marijuana laws, the black market is worth $6 billion a year in British Columbia alone. Criminal sanctions up to this state have completely failed to make a dent in this trade. And as for children, let me also inform members of this fact. Under our current prohibition laws, you can go to pretty much any major city in Canada to the nearest street corner, and marijuana will be easier to obtain than either alcohol or tobacco, two products that are strictly regulated by the provincial governments. Now, I applaud that the fact that the Liberals will be moving ahead with legalization and regulation sometime in the future, but what we are talking about is the here and now, and the continued unfairness of our current regime. Uh, provincial governments regulate alcohol, they regulate tobacco, they regulate gambling, and they make millions of dollars off all three. And it could be argued quite clearly and with lots of evidence that all three do much more harm to our society than marijuana. Yet look at the laws we have. They are completely unbalanced. I, of course, agree that we must do everything to reduce harm to our children. I'm a father of young children myself, and I expect it's a conversation I'll be having to have with them at some point in the future. But using the argument that decriminalization will do nothing against preventing children from using the drug or that it will do nothing against criminal profits is a logical fallacy of the highest degree. 
especially when the current regime is failing in both of these regards quite clearly right now. Madam Speaker, the time has come to talk about what decriminalization will do. Under our current Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, um, the, uh, it comes under Section 4, Subsection 5, uh, well, Subsection 4 and 5. And, you know, marijuana possession of 30 grams or less can result in up to a $1,000 fine and or six months in jail. And yes, it can come to the discretion of the police officer, but our problem with the, on the NDP side of this house is that the law is applied so haphazardly depending on which jurisdiction in Canada you're in. And I don't feel it's right to base your future on the simple discretion of a police officer. We need to have current laws that apply equally in every parts of this country. It can have profound consequences on a person's life, and not many of our young people are aware of those consequences. So as we continue with uh, the prohibition on marijuana, the, the, the criminal uh, sanctions that they might not get, they, they, they might not even get a charge, but they will always have it on their record that a police officer stopped them for that, and it can haunt them for years to come. In 2014, uh, there were 161 marijuana possession charges per 100,000 Canadians. And that is a total of about 57,314 Canadians in 2014 alone. Possession of cannabis is uh, it's responsible for 54% of all police reported drug crime. And you know, the Minister of Health, it's been quoted a few times, has said that we can, it's impossible to arrest our way out of this problem. Yet by not supporting decriminalization efforts, that's precisely what the Liberal government is doing. We are continuing to arrest our way out of this problem. Make, let me make that perfectly clear. Canadians should not have to wait for another year and a half for this Liberal government to get its act together on a promise it made to Canadians. It is completely morally unjustifiable. Here, here. You know, when you have a Prime Minister on the campaign trail who makes a, an explicit promise to Canadians that the, the, the marijuana laws are going to be reformed, that legalization is going to be brought in, and then that, that party forms government, you can understand the confusion. I, I had constituents who thought marijuana was suddenly okay to possess the day after the Liberals got elected. I've had police officers tell me they don't know whether to apply the law equally or not because they simply don't know what the government's intentions are. And my friend, the, Ember, the Member of Parliament from Victoria, has already quoted a few justices who have said they don't want to be the last judge to hand out a marijuana sentence because of the intent of the government. It is complete chaos and confusion, especially on the west coast of British Columbia, an area I am so fortunate to represent as a Member of Parliament. Ms. Madam Speaker, the promise that the Liberals made has evaporated into nothing because that's what we have now. We have nothing, we have no action, we have the status quo. Canadians did not vote for the status quo. They did not vote to continue with indefensible punishments of possession of marijuana, marijuana while we wait for this government to get its act together and introduce laws sometime next year. Canadians will continue to be arrested. They will continue to receive criminal records, continue to be listed on police databases, and continue to suffer from those records into the future, long into the future. Another year or more under a Liberal government of needless arrests and wasteful trials tying up our police resources and the courts. The Justice, Min the Justice Department has confirmed this will cost taxpayers as much as $4 million a year, a complete waste of taxpayer resources. These are not the actions of what a progressive government would do on marijuana laws. If anyone needed further evidence that the word progressive was used as a convenient bumper sticker by the Liberal Party for electoral purposes, they need to look no further than the blatant and completely unfair stance of this government on marijuana. Shame on them for continuing this failed policy. Shame on them for not standing up for what is right. And shame on them for breaking a clear promise. I am proud to be a part of a party that has stood strong on the decriminalization of marijuana since the 1970s. They can continue to quote the member from Outremont and what he said in an interview in 2012, but the history is clear. The NDP has been on the right side of this issue for decades now. We will continue to, read, to lead the right charge and we'll continue to stand up for what is right. Madam Speaker, the Prime Minister's father once famously said, 
There is no place for the state in the bedrooms of the nation. The time has now come for the state to get out of people's personal choices with respect to marijuana possession and use, especially if there is no harm or violence being committed. I call on this government to immediately move to decriminalize marijuana, make the right action, be on the right side of history. Thank you. Questions et commentaires, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice and Attorney General. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Um, the, the, I thank the member for, for his speech. I just wanted to clarify a few points. He, he commented today about uh, the issue of decriminalization and suggested that, that our, our policy was motivated by anything other than the evidence. And I just wanted to inquire of him, um, if, first of all, if he was familiar with the Centre of Addiction Mental Health, CAMH, located in Toronto, uh, uh, which I have quoted liberally from their report of October 19, or 2014 uh, earlier today. And they have uh, offered a, a number of very significant evidence-based conclusions about cannabis and measures aimed at reducing harm in that report, they were quite specific that decriminalization was a half measure and that it failed to address the harms associated with prohibition of cannabis use. And they strongly recommended the Liberal Party's rec proposed, our government's proposed approach of legalization accompanied by a strict public health regulatory framework. And so I would ask the member if he's had the opportunity to read that evidence, uh, which I think is quite compelling and, and would help uh, clarify for him some of the concerns that he has expressed today. Member for Cowich and Malahat Langford. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I have not read that particular report, but this issue has gone on much longer than that report. In 1969, a royal commission began to inquire in the use of cannabis, and its recommendations included the need to repeal prohibition against the simple possession of marijuana and cultivation for personal use. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to talk about harm reduction, let me say this to the member. The reason for this uh, statement was that the Commission concluded that the criminalization of cannabis had no scientific basis and the cost to a significant number of individuals, the majority of whom are young people and to society generally, of a policy of prohibition of simple possession are not justified by the potential for harm that comes from criminal sanctions. That was continued again in a Senate report in 2002. So if we're talking about harm reduction, let's stop sending people to jail. And comments, questions and commentaires, the Honourable Member for Barry Innisfil. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I want to thank the Honourable Member for his impassioned speech, and I also want to uh, also recognize the fact that uh, it's good to see that the Honourable Members from that uh, party are coming to the quick realization that it's the Liberals that are failing on many campaign promises, and that they are, in fact, uh, uh, much, much worse uh, in that regard than the Conservative Party. So it's nice to see that. Uh, uh, at least as they allege constantly in this House. But I want to talk about uh, this particular motion, uh, Madam Speaker, and the fact that uh, under the current uh, regime, there is a lot of confusion in this land, confusion among people, and the Honourable Member spoke to that, confusion among police agencies on the enforcement, uh, given the fact that the Liberals have announced that there's this pending legislation. Wouldn't, in fact, Madam Speaker, uh, the motion that the NDP is proposing today create more confusion for not just police agencies, but others as well. The Honourable Member for Cowich and Malahat Langford. Uh, no, I would argue the exact opposite, because mm -hmm. right now police are caught between a government's intentions and what the law actually mm -hmm. is. And, you know, I, I attended the recent police convention, the reception in Ottawa, and I had the chance to speak to many police officers, both from the Lower Mainland and from Vancouver Island. And they understand that the law is the law, but when you contrast that with a, a sitting government's intent to change the law, it leads to nothing but confusion. We are simply trying to make the law clear. A stopgap measure, while we get to the government's intentions, let's stop harming people with criminal records. Mm -hmm. Police have much bigger things to do. They can go after drug traffickers. People who possess marijuana are not a threat to society. This is outdated science, outdated moral values. It's time to move on. Questions and comments, questions and commentaires, and brief question. A very brief question. The Honourable Member for Sarebeiri sur Loire. Thank you, Madam Speaker. There's an organization in my writing, Freedom to Choose, and Marie-Josée Marie Dumas. The uh, director says that there are also uh, harmful effects on the ground uh, because uh, legalization has uh, not been preceded by decriminalization. So many consumers have fallen into a trap. They will have a criminal record. 
it's going to uh, they'll, it'll be uh, difficult for them to find housing, to find a job, to get insurance. So, what does my colleague think of that? Answer, please, from the member from Cowichan, Mallahat Langford. Uh, absolutely, I, I couldn't agree with my friend uh, more than that. It, this is about uh, looking to the future, about stopping uh, criminal records on young people because that's who it affects. I mean, it. It's just completely unjustifiable and unmoral, immoral that we are saddling these young people with these records far into the future and putting the onus on them to clear their records. So it's uh, time to move on. To, I think our police have better things to do. Thank you. Resuming debate, the uh, producer the honorable member for Port Moody, Coquitlam. 